Welcome to my YouTube channel or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, in this video I'm going to give a brief update on work that I've done on my 1949 P3 Rover uh, since the last video. Uh, and we'll also go on a little drive through the local area where I live. I'm still experimenting with uh, in-car camera options. Uh, so at this stage of, uh, for the drive I've just used uh, one camera uh, that's mounted to the windscreen of the car. Uh, I've got a few other ideas that I'm going to try out down the track with uh, two or even three cameras. Uh, but I think it does, uh, even this video does give some pretty good footage, I think. Now, if you recall uh, back to the previous video, there were a few minor issues to sort out after the first uh, test drives of the car. Uh, so I'm just going to give a very brief overview of the work uh, related to that. Now, you may remember that mainly there are a few annoying rattles. Uh, there was uh, some rattles where the exhaust system was heading up against the chassis, so I've sorted those out. Uh, but the main issue with the rattles was actually from the rear shock absorber, so I'll just uh, go and show you what I'm talking about there. So to show you what I'm talking about, we'll just have to go to the back of the car here. So at the top fastening point for the rear shock absorbers is there and over there uh, so there's a little bolt or actually nut rather that you can access through there uh, and they were both loose so what was happening is that the top of the shock absorbers were just rattling about um, so that wasn't too hard to sort out actually whilst i'm here i'll just quickly show you one other thing as well uh, just in terms of the little bits of work that i've been doing uh, so i made up a rubber rubber bung uh, that covers this inspection point now to cover some of the other jobs that I've been working on in recent times, I'll just have to uh, step into the car now. And I'll... Well, in the car now, and I'll just give a brief overview of some of the work that I've been doing uh, since the last video. And I had a bit of trouble with the choke cable uh, that had come loose, so I managed to sort that out pretty easily. I also had trouble with uh, the accelerator. It wasn't uh, quite returning to idle speed whenever I backed off the accelerator. Uh, is this a bit sticky uh, so I managed to sort that out okay and it's, it's working pretty well now uh, but probably the major problem I had was with uh, the uh, gear selector mechanism uh, also on the early test drives I had uh, trouble with uh, reverse gear I was the car popping out of reverse gear occasionally and just a little bit of difficulty with gear selection generally uh, so I'd done a lot of work with adjusting the gear selectors which tended to be a bit of a trial and error process, but uh, got there in the end. I'm pretty happy with how it's going now. It doesn't pop out of any gear and the, and the gear changes are going quite well. I've also been pretty busy uh, with uh, little bits of work on interior trim in the car. Mainly I'm just trying to get the car ready for the motor trimmer, uh, which has turned out to be a bit of a frustrating process, to be honest. Uh, I was hoping to get the car to a motor trimmer in October this year, but he's uh, turned out to be pretty busy. Uh, it's now looking like he's not going to be able to fit my car in until uh, December this year, hopefully. However, I think the biggest development uh, since the last video is I've uh, managed to get this car registered. And that has turned out to be one complex process. I could devote an entire video to it, uh, but I won't do that. I'll spare you. Uh, suffice to say, it was complicated by uh, the fact that the car had never been registered in Australia before. Uh, and also the car was, was bought over, or shipped over from New Zealand by its previous owners back in 1987 and then it was stored in a shed in Snowtown in the mid-north and south Australia and, and never registered here. Uh, also at that time there was no requirement for import paperwork uh, such as, as there is now. Uh, so essentially there was no record of this car in Australia at all, uh, which created a few bureaucratic hurdles for me uh, when I came to try and register the car. But I uh, worked my way through those bureaucratic hurdles and the, the car registered is registered now. I've got it registered under what we refer to as a historic vehicle registration, uh, which allows me to use the car for up to 90 days a year, uh, which for me is plenty. And that about covers it. Uh, so uh, let's get on and uh, go for a drive. That knocking sound is the SU electric fuel pump, so quite a normal sound for these cars. There is 
a little squeak in the steering which I hope goes away. I think I know what it is uh, when I had everything apart in the steering column. Uh, there's like a little conduit tube that goes down right through the centre to carry the wires for the horn and so on. Uh, and that's supported by a couple of bushes. And I think I made the bushes a little bit too tight. Heading towards the coast now, just for a short uh, coastal run. In this sort of situation, I'm tending only to change down to third rather than second, because the engine is actually pretty talky and it seems to actually cope with that pretty well. Also, I'm not very good at changing down from third to second yet because there's uh, no synchro. I'm slowly getting the hang of it though. This is pretty early on a Sunday morning, so a few joggers out and a few cyclists, uh, but not much traffic. At this stage I'm still getting used to driving the car really so generally I'm picking pretty uh, quiet time so I don't have to deal with too much traffic. <laughs> I think I got a bit lucky with the engine on this car, it really sounds pretty good. Uh, before I bought it, it had been sitting unused for 28 years, uh, so I did a fair bit of work in recommissioning it, but uh, yeah, very happy with it. Going past the Palais at Semaphore now, which is a, a nice restored building now, but it, it did lay uh, derelict for quite a number of years. 1922, 100 years old, the um, Palais. Oh, wow. Oh, good. Still looking good. Wow. Well, <laughs> it's re-looking good. Yeah. And through a bad stage. There's a fire truck ahead uh, driving slowly so I might speed this uh, section of video up a bit. I'm uh, really starting to enjoy driving the car now although at first I have to say my uh, anxiety sort of got in the way of the enjoyment of the driving experience. I think it's just to do with the fact that I put so much time, energy, money, blood, sweat and tears into this project uh, that it just took a while to sort of relax and just enjoy it. I've had the car registered for just over two months now. Lark's Pier Hotel there on the right, uh, which is a beautiful old building. It had a big uh, makeover actually more than a decade ago now, uh, but it's uh, one of our favourite spots to drop in for a meal and a drink. 
Actually, the Largs Pier is quite a noteworthy building, really. It was uh, built in 1882, which makes it a pretty old building by South Australian standards. And it would have been the, the first stopover point for some of the very early immigrants to South Australia. And now on with the drive. I'll head down uh, Jetty Road, Largs Bay here, and then uh, turn around and uh, come back along the coast. Jeanette suggesting a, a nice place to go to lunch uh, and also organising some uh, leafy green food for our foster bunny. Uh, Jeanette does uh, animal foster care for the Animal Welfare League. I'm probably tending to leave it in third gear a little more than I should. I really have to uh, practice my uh, third gear to second gear down changes. Again there's no synchromesh on that particular change and it's a, a little harder uh, to do the down changes without some commission than it is the up changes. We might even have to lash out and put our shades up for you on the back deck. Yeah. It's going to be warm already. The day I took this drive, I think it would have been our first uh, sort of reasonably warm day. We've had all spring and we're about two thirds of the way through spring. Uh, so that's pretty unusual for here. I think it got to about 30 degrees. It's a nice uh, coastal drive here which runs through Semaphore, Largs Bay and then on to Outer Harbour. The car gets along pretty well really, although very different driving experience to a modern car. I mean there's no power steering, no power brakes. I mean everything works quite well but just doesn't have that sort of instantaneous response that you get with a modern car so it just takes a bit of adjusting to really.
almost back home now. I'm uh, driving around the block, actually mainly to avoid uh, doing a three-point turn on my street. Well, uh, hi again. Uh, just about to sign off now, uh, but as I mentioned, I think uh, the, at the beginning of the video, I'm experimenting with uh, in car camera options. Uh, so I'm working on getting a few further videos out uh, with some even more interesting footage of uh, drives in the car, I hope. Uh, so until then, I'll see you in another video. So uh, bye for now.